Hello and welcome to this video where we will be looking at topsoil stripping in Kubla Cubed. It's quite a straightforward process but there are a few key things to remember. We'll be starting with this project where we've already defined the existing surface with the contours on the site plan. What we want to do is strip the area within the yellow outline. So the first thing to point out is a strip should always be in its own phase. This is the number one most important thing to remember. The way Kubla Cubed works with the construction phases, so each phase has a ground surface and a proposed surface, a strip needs to be in its own phase so that the next phase, the one that follows the strip, can calculate from the strip level. If you put elements like the platform or feature surface on top of the strip in the same phase, they will override the strip elevations rather than calculating from the strip levels. There are two methods to define your stripped area. One is to import from a CAD or PDF file and the other is to trace over the site plan. So they both begin in the same way, which is by clicking here on the Earthworks plus button and the element that we'll be adding is the reduce element. The reduced element lowers the elevation of the ground by a set amount, so you'll always use this element to define your topsoil stripping areas. So we will start with the first option, which is to trace the outline, and we'll go through the other option of importing the outline from the file in a moment. So you start by tracing with the mouse and just left clicking where you want to place a point along the boundary, scrolling the mouse wheel to zoom in and out, and holding down the mouse wheel to pan the camera. And then you right click to complete the outline. So you can give it a name if you want to, but in this case I'm not going to add a tag and I'll just leave it blank. Then you can click finish and I'm ready to see what it looks like, so click OK. So automatically you can see that it's added a depth of one foot. Um, this will show as one meter if you're using metric. And if you wish to, you can change the desired depth. Um, so in this case, I'll set it to 0.5 feet or six inches. So you'll notice um, here the side batter. When you zoom in, you can see that it is the angle of the slope that joins the proposed reduced level to the ground. Usually the side batter on strip areas is quite steep. So I'm going to change this and set it to 0.1. So there you go, that's creating a topsoil strip calculation by tracing. It's as simple as that. Um, in this example, you can see that it has given us 3042.63 cubic yards of strip volume. Next method that I'm going to show you, uh, which is importing from a CAD file um, that has been set as a site plan. So you can do this either with a CAD file or a PDF, and it is the same process. But I'm going to choose to do it with the embedded CAD file in this example. So I start by adding another reduce element. At this point, you need to press escape or click on the cross to end the tracing tool, which has started automatically. Then I'm going to click on this button, which is add outlines from site plan. Um, and the CAD files are listed here and then the PDFs are listed below. So I'm going to choose the CAD file in this case, which opens up the load outlines window. And what we need to do is set a sample, which tells the system what sort of entities from CAD or PDF you want to import as your site strip outline. So to do this, um, you just need to zoom right in and select the line um, on your drawing by dragging a selection over the line. You can see the extracted data on the right that is picked out and the outline that you want. Just double check and then click OK. And you can see it's done exactly the same as when we did the tracing. It sets a one foot depth as the default. So we'll adjust that to 0.5 and the side batter to 0.1. And there's your site strip. So now that we've done that, we're ready to create our next phase to define, for example, a demolition or the bulk earthworks on your project. As it is so important, it is worth reiterating here that the site strip has to be in its own separate phase or tab. 
and it's a good idea to rename it appropriately. So right click on the tab, click rename and then enter the name, so site strip. Okay, so we've covered the basics of site stripping um, and most of the time this is all that you'll need. There are just a few other scenarios that we'll now go through which you might encounter. So you may have an area within your strip that you want to exclude from the strip calculation. So what we need to do is go back into the reduce area that you've just created and click edit. And we need to do an outline within that outline that we've just done. So it will tell the system that the inner area shouldn't be part of the strip. Sometimes these are referred to as punch outs. So to do that, you just trace or add from the file like we did before. Okay, so I'll just do an example and I'll create one by tracing an, air, an area there and you can add as many areas as you want. So another one over here. This may be you. If you have an existing building, a tree or a pond within your site plan that you don't want to strip over. So when we click OK, you can see that it's excluded those areas and they show at the ground level. When you hover your cursor over um, that area, there is no cut or fill, just the ZE or the existing level. So just to go over that again, um, you put a new outline within your outline. So the final thing we'll be looking at is when strips need varying depths. So here we have our 0.5 strip, but what if there is an area that needs a deeper or a shallower strip? Of course, the obvious thing to do is to create another reduce element and you can add as many elements as you want. So if I draw this on here and set that to 0.8 feet inside the 0.5 foot strip. One question that you might have is what happens when two strips intersect? So you could trace around both areas and snap the boundaries, but what you can also do is put one over the top of another. So let's go through what happens in that scenario. So I'll add another reduced element over the top that has a complex boundary. Rather than snapping two outlines, it's quicker to intersect. So what happens in this case is the reduce element that is lower in the list takes precedence and will override the area that is listed above it in the area of intersection. So this area of 0.5 foot depth, this one is one foot and so the intersection is a one foot cut because the lower element takes priority. So reduced elements will override each other in this scenario as they have their depth set from ground. The depths from setting will do this automatically when the option is set to auto, which it is by default. You shouldn't change this setting in the top soil strip phase um, because the default is exactly what we want in this situation. And that's it for today. We've now covered everything in the top soil stripping tutorial. If you have any questions, please add them in the comments below, post in the forums or contact our support team. Thanks for watching.